Okay, if you hear some slurping sounds in the middle of this video, it's because I want to drink my cup of tea before it goes cold. And yes, I'm British, so we drink tea. Okay, so this picture, someone very kindly put up this wooden frame so you could stand behind it and get a picture of you inside a picture frame. But it could be better because, well, I'll use the perspective correction tools to straighten up the actual image because it's got a bit of a perspective problem. And maybe I'll crop it as well to get rid of that little bit of gravel path there. But my problem with this is that the people in the picture thought, oh, what a great idea. I know, let's just leave all our coats and whatever just by the side of the picture frame, which is kind of ruining the shot a little bit. I want to get rid of those and I'm going to use the clone stamp to do it. First of all, I need to zoom in on the area. So I'll come to my zoom tool and I'll just click in the area and I'll just drag off to the right. And you can see I'm zooming in on that particular area. Then I'll press my space bar to get my hand tool. So the whole thing is in the middle of my picture. Okay, first things first, and that should usually mean safety first, I'm going to duplicate my picture and call it fix so that I'm working on a copy of my image and I don't permanently alter the image below. Okay, so first thing, let's come to my clone stamp tool. Here it is. Sorry, the clone brush tool or press S on your keyboard and select it. The first thing I need to do is select a point that I want to take samples from. Like for example, supposing I wanted a little bit of this picture frame in the middle of that grass, for example, I'll come over to my picture frame and I'll press my Alt key. I'm holding it down at the moment and I'm moving my mouse around. And you can see that little crosshair. If I come to say this point here and I click on it, I've set my source point. And you know where the source point is because you can see that little crosshair. That's where I'm selecting everything from. If I come over to this area here, in the grass and I start, I'm holding down my left mouse button and I'm drawing out part of that picture frame like this. That is the general principle. You pick a source area by holding down the Alt key and then wherever you press next with your left mouse button, you'll take the pixels from your source area and you'll clone them in another area of your picture. And that's the way it works. I'm going to press Control or Command plus Z to get rid of that because I don't really need that. That is just the general principle. I'm also going to show you something else. I'm going to come to my fixed layer and I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to add a new layer, a new blank layer. Here we are, add pixel layer. And I'm going to call this clone zero one. That is just a completely blank layer. There's no pixels on there, nothing. It's like a sheet of transparent glass laid over my original image. Then I'm going to come to here, where it says current layer, I'm going to come to current layer and below. Now, what that means is I'm working on my blank layer, my clone zero one layer, because it's selected. But because I've got current layer and below selected, it means any sample pixels are taken from my current layer and below. Now, on my current layer, it's blank. There's no pixels to sample from. But the layer below contains all the pixels which make up my picture frame. So I can do this. And now if I come to my background layer and I make it invisible for a second, you can see my clone zero one layer has got just the clone stamp markings I've made and nothing else. And what that means for you is this is non-permanent. I can make this clone zero one layer invisible anytime I want and the underlying image is not affected. It's non-destructive image editing. And people who retouch portraits do this all the time. Now concerning the brush itself, at the moment it's got an edge which is not too soft, not too hard. It's a good edge to work with, but if I hold down my control plus alt keys and I'm using a Mac at the moment, I can make the brush size bigger or smaller by holding down the left mouse button and dragging left to right. And if I want to adjust the hardness, I push up or down. At the moment, I'm pushing down and I've got a hardness of 100%. Now, if I make my marks, can you see how the edge is very hard and if I hold down control plus alt again and my left mouse button and I make the brush very soft with a hardness of zero and I make my marks, I get a very soft edge. Now at this point you may be thinking, well, if I make the edge of my brush as soft as possible, it will help to blend in things nicely with the surrounding areas. It can do, but you always run the risk of your picture looking a little bit mushy around the edges. One of the skills with the clone stamp tool is figuring out how hard to make the edge of your brush. And in general, if I zoom right in very, very close, 
Of the three brush strokes I've made here, I would say maybe the original one, or the one with a slightly soft edge, but not too much, is probably the most successful. And the reason I say that is look at this border here between the coats and the grass. That's got a similar hardness to its edge. Look, you've got the transition between the coat and the grass. You've got maybe what, two, three, four pixels between completely coat and completely grass. That is similar to the hardness of the edge of the original clone stamping I did. This one here, where the hardness was set to 100%, that might be a little bit too hard. You might be able to see the edges of your clone brush tool. This one here, where it's very, very soft, you run the risk of getting a rather mushy and indistinct effect. And enough of the theory, let's actually do this. Let's get rid of that layer and recreate a new one and call this clone 01. Select my clone brush tool. I'm going to press Control plus Alt and my left mouse button to make the hardness a bit harder and the brush size a little bit smaller. Let's try about, say, there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a new point. I'm going to come to this point here on this line, there. And now, when I move around my mouse, I haven't clicked it yet, I've got to select where I want it to be stamped down. Now, what I want to do with this is just get rid of just this edge of the sleeve because it's in front of the frame, it doesn't look good. And so I come here and I place carefully about there. If I place it off to the side, you can see I'm going to get a mismatch between the line above and the actual clone stamp line on the edge of my picture. If I place it here, again, I'm gonna have a problem. I need to come so that the very edge of that frame matches up. So that's gonna be about there, isn't it? So I press and hold and just draw in the image. That's all there is to it. Now that was very simple, but I've still got these coats which I need to get rid of. And so if I come and I press Alt to select a patch of grass and I come down here and I'm painting, that's all very fine, that's good. Here's a couple of things to watch out for. Supposing I want to paint down here and so far everything's going fine and dandy, I'm getting rid of this coat. If I keep on going too far, can you see my source crosshair moving as I move up and down. Watch what happens when I start going too far. Ah, can you see how the crosshairs have started to come into this bit of the jacket? I'm just moving along the edge of my jacket now. And so what I'm doing is going too far with my brush tool. And so it's just picking up the area of that picture. If I want to stop doing that, I come back and just get rid of it and let go periodically. So that now, if I go too far, can you see my crosshair? because I've already painted in those areas beforehand, I can go further before I start getting bits of my jacket again like that. So do it in sections. The other thing I was doing as well, I keep on selecting from the same source area. And so what I'm gonna get in that case, I'm gonna get repeated patterns of grass. If I just circle in some bits here, here, and here, you can see the same light blade of grass appearing again and again. And because you've got those patterns which you wouldn't expect to see in nature, that's one of the giveaways that I've used a clone stamp tool. So in that case, I will select from different areas so I don't get that problem so much. And now look here, if I come here right up to the edge, it can be a little bit oh, difficult and I'm repeating patterns here. So I'll come back to here. It can be a bit difficult coming up to the edge of this picture frame. That's a bit of a problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back to my history and Let's see if I can come down so that, yeah. If I come down to this clone brush tool operation here, you can see where I've got rid of the bit of this coat sleeve which was sticking in front of and nothing else. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer and call this clone zero two. I am going to zoom out a little bit. So I've got plenty of grass area around to select from. Select my clone stamp tool. Okay, so I'm zoomed out. I've got current layer and below selected. I can make my brush size a bit larger, I think, and I'm just going to start putting in areas of grass. You'll notice how it is grass, it is a bit random, but you have a slight kind of horizontal feel to the various different areas of light and dark in here. So I will try and obey those as I go along. So follow the lines in your picture. I'll come up here and I'll just cheerfully cut into the edge of that picture frame on the side of my picture. Let's select different areas so I get less of a problem with repetition. You can see how I get this little shadow area here. Yeah, I should definitely follow that. So when I place my image now, I won't place it there. I won't place it there. I'll place it there. So it follows the line of the shadow and down to there. And you can see how I'm working pretty quickly with this. 
Now what about this bit here? Let's select a shadow area and come above and below. I'm going to let go and my source point is still in the same place. So I can carry on like this, get rid of various different bits here, come to this areas of grass below here, come to maybe this area here and just get rid of various different things around here. Now what I'm going to do in this particular bit, I'm going to make my brush edge softer because what I want to do is I want to gradually fade out that shadow because if you notice, if I keep that shadow going the way it was going, it's going to come in front of my window frame instead of matching up with it. That's not a good look. So I'm trying to fade it out before it gets there, which again is not such a natural look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my hardness back to where it was. Come on, there we go. And instead, I'm just going to get rid of that shadow altogether. If people didn't know it was already there, they won't notice that it's gone. And a lot of what you're doing here is deciding that well, what people don't know won't hurt them. Now you'll notice a mistake I've made here. Can you see what it is? Well, I'll give you a clue. I've got three circles on my screen, which I've just put on at the moment. I've repeated that little brown bit three different times. And because I've repeated it, it's a giveaway as to what I've actually done. So I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller. I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to get rid of two of the bits like this. You'll also notice a slight repetition in general around here because of the various different things I've done. I'm getting certain lines coming down in this grass. I want this grass just to look random. So I'm going to select from different areas like I'm doing now and just gradually break up this area. So there's less of a problem with repeated patterns like this. Oh yeah, there's a bit repeated here, maybe a little bit around here and a bit around here. Now I'm going to press Command plus zero or Control plus zero and look at the picture as a whole. Now here's something. The focus of this picture are going to be these people. The other focus of this picture is going to be the window frame. If people look around the picture once more, they're going to be looking at that tree in the background, other trees in the background, the horizon, the sky. One of the last places they're going to be looking at is the corner of the picture down here, which we've been working on. So you can get away with quite a bit there. Unless the repetition is very obvious, people simply won't notice that. But I'm going to zoom in on this area now because you will notice I cut in to the side of my picture with my clone stamp tool. And that will happen because it's quite hard sometimes to match up the edge of what you're doing when you're using the clone stamp tool. So there's no point in even trying. Instead, what you do is use a layer mask. Now, what I mean by that, if I make this layer invisible, you can see I still have the edge of my window on the underlying layer. So all I do is I make sure my clone 02 layer is selected with all that grass on, and then I come to mask layer. This creates a layer mask. And from there, I select my paintbrush tool. The color I want is black. And I'm gonna make my brush size a lot smaller than it is, and maybe a little bit harder like this. And then when I come in, I'm going to paint black onto my layer mask because when you paint black onto a layer mask, it makes the layer it's attached to invisible. Just where you paint the black. And so you get to see the underlying layers. Now at the moment, I'm making the mistake that a lot of people make. I'm trying to guess where the edge of the picture is and just draw up to there. There's no point. Look, just come straight in like this and draw in like that. Now what's happening there, if I make this whole layer invisible, you're still seeing just these little bits of the coat on the underlying layers. I'll make this visible again, but the nice thing about layer masks, if I zoom right up close and personal, select my paintbrush tool again, maybe make it a little bit smaller and maybe a little bit softer. If I now come and swap my colors over so now I'm painting with white. In fact, I'll select white like this. When I come back in, I make the layer, which has the layer mask on, visible again. White reveals, black conceals. Now I've got a clear idea where the edge of my picture is. I can just come in and I can just paint out the bit that I don't want. You can see there, I went a bit too far. That's not a problem. I can come back and select black again. 
and I can select black and white as many times as I like just to conceal and reveal and conceal and reveal as much as I want come down to the bottom like that now if I press Control or Command plus zero there's my picture with those coats completely disappeared the clone stamp tool is the big granddaddy of all the blemish removal tools. In fact, the clone stamp tool was the first tool I ever used in an image editing program that was in Photoshop version one back in 1990. And it doesn't do what the other blemish removal tools do in that it doesn't try and match what you're stamping down with the surrounding areas. You just pick up an area from one part of a picture and you stamp it down in another. That's all it does. From that point of view, it's quite crude. But sometimes the automatic blemish removal tools, they will try and help you too much and give you a result that you don't want. In which case it's really worth taking a look at the clone tool because of all the tools, it's probably the one that gives you the most control. 